Hi guys, Mr. Johnston here. I'm going to go over uh, Robot C Virtual Worlds and how to do the uh, sensing challenge where we use a line follower to uh, get a robot to follow a line. And the challenge is called Robot Slalom. And we're going to do number two, and then you're going to use it to do number three uh, for the Robot Slalom challenge. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is go ahead and open up Robot C. When you have Robot C open, the first thing you should always do is go under Robot and make sure you have the correct platform type chosen. We're going to use VEX 2.0 Cortex and Natural Language PLTW. If it's checked already, don't click it again because you'll uncheck it. Okay, and then under Compiler Target, make sure you have Virtual Worlds selected. If you don't see Virtual Worlds there, that's okay. Just let me know. We just might need to add the license to the computer. It's pretty easy to do. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and click New File, and then click Download to Robot so that we can get the Virtual Worlds Curriculum Companion open. All right, you're probably going to see something like this when it opens. We're going to make sure that the robot we have selected is the Swerve Bot for this one. And you'll notice the Swerve Bot has three different line followers. It's got line, light sensors, all kinds of things that we need. All right, so now let's go under Sensing. And then I'm going to show you Robot Slalom 2, and if you are able to successfully uh, do what I do, then you'll be able to do number 3. All right, that'll be a true test right there. So I'm going to say Start Activity. I'm going to leave this little window open, go back to the main page, and uh, go to Robot, Motor, and Sensor Setup. And then under Standard Models, I'm going to select the RVW Swerve Bot. And there's our little guy, and we got everything that we need. Click OK, then click Compile Program, so that way our program knows we're using the Swerve Bot when we start typing, and it can have those autocomplete uh, text for us. Um, we're going to use a control structure like we did in uh, the very last video. If you haven't watched that, uh, I showed how to do the Century Challenge. So we're going to say while true which is to say always. So I want you to always do this. Repeat anything that's in between these curly braces. It's going to repeat it over and over and over again forever. All right. And sometimes you can click Fix Formatting. It helps to, to see what we're doing here. OK? All right. So the first thing I want to do is I, I'm going to base uh, my movement on the actual light of a, a sensor. So I'm going to have a, a motor and then right motor okay and so motor right motor right there equals 127 okay let's see here all right now left motor so I'm going to copy and paste this and change this to left. Okay. Now that that's gonna just get my motor starting, but but why or what do I need to make sure is happening? So I'm gonna have this a condition. I'm gonna say if, and in my condition, which is in these parentheses, is what's gonna say whether or not this code is going to run. See how it's in between these curly braces? So anything in between these curly braces is going to run if whatever's in here turns out to be true. Okay, and so what I need to do is get a sensor value, the sensor value of the uh, light sensor. Now I forget what they called it, so I'm going to go up here to motor and sensor setup, and I'm going to go under uh, analog sensors and see what they called it. Line or left line follow. We'll use the uh, left line follower. That's fine. So left line. We're only going to use one line follower. Left line follower. And so we're going to say sensor value left line follower if it is um, greater than let's say 2000 then we're going to do the following. So if it's greater than 2,000, then it's going to do the following. It's going to go straight. All right. Let's just test that. Let's just see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to say download the robot. And there we go. Now, here, if you notice, I have these sensors open uh, 
on the program window. So while the, the robot's running, this is data and information that it's feeding back to the program. Uh, so if you want to make sure that if you can see that stuff, you might need to go under uh, robot and then uh, debugger windows. While it's running, you can select the different things. So mainly we want to look at sensors. All right, so I have the window open here, and I can see right here that the uh, left line follower is at 701. So is that greater than 2000? It is not. So I don't think this is going to do anything. So if I push play, right, it does nothing. All right, and it, it's still running the program. The program isn't quit it quit because it's still it's continually checking to see if it's greater than 2000. So let me change that. I'm going to change that to less than 2000 download the robot. Now 700 is definitely less than 2000 so that should go. Okay so great. So now it's going and it's just gonna keep keep going. Now I'm gonna do that again and let me, I'm gonna slow it down to say like 60 and I'm gonna watch the value change as it goes over those black lines. Alright so refresh and I'm watching down here where it says the, the left line follower right now is at 701. So it goes down. And notice it goes up when it hit that black line. And so if it, it, if it goes above the 2000, nothing's really going to happen um, because I didn't turn the motors off. So the second half of this control structure of an if statement is else. So it says if the program doesn't know what to do if it's not true. So you have to tell it. What do you what does it do if it's not true? And that means go down to the else statement. And I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to tell it's turn to to stop. So I'm going to say zero. Download the robot and let's just test it. So programming is a lot of trial and error see what happens alright so we're over this light area when it hits this dark line it stopped perfect this is exactly what I wanted it to do alright now for this particular challenge it looks like it veers off to the right a little bit so what I'm gonna have it do is instead of going straight instead of it going straight I'm gonna have it go to the right just a little bit to kinda just pull to the right a little bit sometimes cars have like an alignment problem and they'll pull to the right a little bit and you have to constantly correct that uh, course by putting pressure on the steering wheel once you've gone a little bit too far to the right you're gonna need to pull it back so we're gonna make our robot automatically go a little bit to the right and you can do that by making the right excuse me the left motor go a little bit faster so I'm going to change the, the speed to the, the left motor to go a little bit faster, which is going to make my robot pull to the right. And if that happens, then it's going to hit that dark line. So let's download that and test that. And when it hits that dark line, then the motors are going to go off, right? So, okay, good. So that's really, that's what I wanted it to do. It might sound funny, but that's what I wanted it to do. And I'm actually going to even make it turn a little bit harsher. So I'm going to change that to 50. And try it again. All right, refresh. There you go. Boom. It hits the line. So once it hits that line, I don't want it to stop. I, want it, I do want it to keep going. Um, so what I'm going to have it do is uh, I'm going to have it go a little bit more straight. So let's say uh, 50, let's do 75 and 50, so it's going to kind of pull back the other direction. Download the robot. And you'll see what happens here. So it's going to pull to the right until it hits the line, and then it's going to, you notice it tried to pull to the left a little bit. Now it was going too fast, to, so it missed that line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that to zero, and this to zero, and I think that might work actually. So it's only going to be running one motor at a time. It's going to run the left motor if the value is less than 2000. Once that value goes over 2000, it's going to run the right motor. All right, and there you go. So it's jittering like that because only one motor is running at a time. All right, one, 
the the right motor or the left motor will turn on until it hits that black line and then it turns off and the other motor turns on and then it it hits the black line and then it goes away from the black line and then it hits the black line and then goes away from the black line and it hits the black line and then goes away from the black line and that's really all there is to it now if you want to make it more smooth you can play with the power um, if you go too fast or too slow or if you want to make it jitter less then you can give a little bit of power to the other motors okay but really that that's all there is to it guys I, I know that I say this a lot but don't make it harder than it is alright here we go see that's even more jittery because I'm sending a lot of power to the motor right, but you know you realize you only you only need one sensor if you have more than one sensor you know it might be useful because then maybe you can put the robot down anywhere and it'll find a line and automatically start to follow that line but for the purposes of this exercise I think we're good so play around experiment see what you can figure out if you can make it more smooth um, that's fine but other than that this this is a very simple code that will accomplish the task well look at that All right, there you go. I hope you had fun.